Grammar is glamour. They basically mean the same thing. Glamour is a synonymous with grammar, and it's from Scottish. came into the language a long time ago from Old French and Latin. And today, though, I would say that grammar is glamour, with the idea that it's something magical, charming, almost romantic. And uh, it's that way because it's a wonderful way, grammar, to explain how a language looks, to describe it, to explain how it works. It's almost magical. For example, what is a sentence? I'm a teacher, and I have to explain this every so often. And uh, it's not easy to explain in a way that's meaningful and actually practical or useful to students. A uh, sentence is a complete idea. A sentence has a verb or a subject. Still, what's a st uh, student supposed to do with that information? Instead, uh, I learned a great way to explain it from a teacher of mine named Robert Allen, who came up with lots of magical, romantic ways to describe the language. He said, a sentence is a group of words that can be changed to a yes or no question. Sentences can also uh, be described as begin, beginning with a capital letter and ending with punctuation. For example, Marty has finally found a job. Uh, obviously, it's a sentence, but suppose somebody wrote something on their paper and they weren't sure if it was a sentence, what could they do to check? Well, if we apply our definition of what a sentence is, then if I can make it a question, has Marty finally found a job, then it's a sentence. And so it is a sentence. I've just shown that. He will start next Monday. Try it again. Will he start next Monday? It's another good sentence because I was able to change that group of words to a yes or no question. Now, sometimes we need to add some other words, do, does, or did, to make the yes-no question, but they don't really change the meaning or add any more content to the sentence itself. Let's see how that works. Marty needs to buy black shoes. Let me try to make this a sentence to be sure that it is. Does Marty need to buy black shoes? It's a good question. It's a good sentence. He wore out his last pair. Did he wear out his last pair? Again, I was able to change that group of words to a yes or no question, and that proves to me it's a sentence. This kind of a technique is really great because it allows someone to edit their own writing. So if, for example, in my situation, I'm a teacher and I ask students to, let's say, edit their papers, double check, make sure they're writing complete sentences on their paper, then I can ask them to form yes or no questions to really be able to check and to be sure that they're doing that. So let's see how that could work. He must get black shoes <clears throat> because his uniform is black. It's not uncommon. I've found sentences like this often on people's papers. And um, an easy way to have a student check and, and to correct their own writing would be to ask them, why don't you try to make yes or no questions out of each sentence? Must he get black shoes? That works fine. Is because his uniform black? I'm not able to answer that. Because is his uniform black? Again, I'm not really able to answer that as a yes or no because, as you know, I feel, and that's exactly what we need, is that feeling that the, scent, that the question just isn't right. And native speakers have that intuitive knowledge of, the, of, the, of a language. And uh, non-native speakers also can usually recognize that a sentence or a question just doesn't sound right. So a very common way to correct those kinds of um, fragments, basically, are usually by adding that second sentence to the first. But then again, we should check and just be sure it's a good question. It's a good sentence by making a question. So, for example, must he get black shoes because his uniform is black? Yes, he must. I was able to change those words into a yes or no question. It's a good sentence. 
Another um, good technique of this is students, again, will write sentences like this. We often call them run-ons. His work hours are 3 a.m. to noon. His lunch break is at 7. And if a student went back and asked yes or no questions, they'd start to uh, realize, for example, are his work hours 3 a.m. to noon? His lunch break is at 7. They'd see that something's wrong here. And they could try to work with it a little bit more, maybe make a second question. Is his lunch break at 7? And now it's clear that, these, that this one sentence actually is two. And to correct it, it, it's easy to tell people, well, why don't you just end each question with a period? His work hours are 3 a.m. to noon. His lunch break is at 7. Uh, this technique is also nice because then you can begin to talk about other ways to combine sentences. For example, with a comma and and, or two sentences combined with a semicolon. Uh, these are great ways, I think. This is one great way for students to be able to edit their own work and their own sentences. As I said, Robert Allen was my teacher, showed it to me, and he has a number of um, kind of little magical tricks like this that are very simple and also always tell us what, langu what the English language looks like. They're great descriptions. Uh, I'd be very curious to hear what you think about my little um, presentation, and I'd love to hear from you. My name's Richard Abend. I can be reached at robind at mpc.edu. And uh, I'm going to try another one of these. It's going to be about what's the subject of a sentence and how do we find it. And um, let me know what you think. Should I do another one of these, or am I better off stopping after my first one? Thanks very much. Bye.